That verse also defines Paul, who he was, and what he existed for. He had been called into the family of God, set aside, separated by God, unto the gospel. For the express purpose of giving the gospel of Christ to as many people in the world as he could. Now none of us have claimed to be the Apostle Paul. I hope you wouldn't do that. But every one of us who are saved have been called by God. First we're called into his family and when we accept his invitation to receive Jesus Christ as our Savior, he sanctified us. He did set us apart or separate us for his purpose. And he preserved us in Jesus Christ for all eternity. And when he said we are his called ones, it added another seal of assurance of our salvation. Never forget that the word called in the scriptures has to do with our being in the family of God. In Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 1, the writer was writing and he wrote to holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. That didn't mean that God was calling them out of heaven to get their attention. It, believes as, it means as believers we are recipient of the blessing that comes of being fellow companions in the family of God being designated as a called of God. It means we have an, all the assurance of the blessing of God, being God's family, and we enjoy those blessings daily. So who are we? We're the called of God. And we are called to be saints. Now, in verse 1, Paul says it's called to be an apostle. It means God had put his seal on Paul, and nothing could break that seal, so Paul could enjoy the full assurance of salvation, the joy of serving the Lord. He said, well, that was Paul. Okay. Well, what does it say about us? What does it have to do with us? It has a lot to do with us. There are all kinds of things that I could say that I won't say this morning. But look at verse 6 of Romans chapter 1. Paul said he was called, verse 6, Among whom are ye also the call of Jesus Christ? The words were addressed in the first instance to the Christians in Rome. But there for us as well. And this verse is telling us that believers of this day and time have the same assurance and all the blessings of God that the apostle had because we are among the called of Jesus Christ. And notice verse 7. Called to be saints. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you, peace from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Called to be saints simply means called saints. This is not written to some elite group in the church. Not the idea we get to talk about saints, but that's not the biblical idea. It was an open letter to all believers at Rome. It's an open letter to us today. Paul used that same analogy in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1 through 3. In writing to the church at Corinth, Paul said, On the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, call to be saints with all that in every place call for the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. There's that phrase again. Call to be saints. So who are we? We're the called of God. We're called to be saints. We're called saints. He gives us the name saints. 
A saint is not some person that's had all kind of things written about him to glorify him. Saints are living people who know Christ as their Savior and live for him daily. So the first Corinthians, they were addressed to the entire church at Corinth and to all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we are called what? We are called saints. That's who we are. We're God's people. Now the world doesn't like that. The world will laugh at us. But I'm saying to you as a church, if you know Jesus Christ your Savior, you're part of this local assembly, you're called by God my saint. You belong to me. And we didn't do that. All of God's people have two addresses. We have an earthly address. We have a spiritual address. Now my earthly address is 6985 Hobgood Road, Fairman, Georgia. And my mailbox is full of junk every day. I wish there's some way I could eliminate it, but I can't. But my spiritual address is in Christ. Uh, verse 7 of Romans chapter 1. To all the saints, all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you in peace from our Lord Jesus, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, we are called to God in Christ. Local churches are made up of saints. Who are we? We're God's people. We're his saints. We've been sanctified by God. It means we it, he set us apart for his use and for his eternal purpose. So local church is made up of saints. People who have their faith in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Who have been set apart by God. By God. And we as a church so rejoice that we have been called into God's family by His grace for His purpose. So we are saints. I'm just establishing this from the scriptures. I'm not trying to blow our whistle. I'm just saying this is what God says. But does that mean we are to sit on our laurels and watch the world go by? The truth is, we are debtors. Romans chapter 1, verse 14. Paul told, us, told who he was, what God had called him to do, and he said, I am a debtor. Both to the Greeks, to the barbarians, both to the wise, to the unwise. We are debtors. We are debtors to every person we meet who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior. We may not like them. They may not like us. But we owe them the opportunity to hear the gospel of Christ at least one time in their lives. We are God's call to accomplish His work on earth. And right now, our job is to give out the gospel of Christ. Paul told the church at Rome he was ready. He said, so much is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He said, I'm ready to preach to you. He had a message he was not ashamed of. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul had a message he was not ashamed of, but I'm beginning to wonder if we as a church are ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We're not, we're not sharing it very much. Paul had a message that was a good news. But it's a message that was more than information. Now you can turn on your radio now or your TV and you get all kinds of information. Some of it's good news. Some of it's not good news. Some of it's just, just plain garbage. Excuse me. Hallelujah. I'll get together a little bit. Let me say this to you. God has called us and has given us 
a job to do and we to do it. Paul has uh, been called out by God to bring the gospel and we have been called out by God to bring the gospel. Now, the gospel of Christ is good news. But it's more than good news with information. The gospel is not advice to people. Suggestion they lift themselves up and begin to do better. And that's why most people think the gospel is. It's news to tell them, turn over a new leaf. That's not what it is. The gospel is power. It's the power of God and salvation. It's God's power that lifts people up. Paul never said that the gospel brings power. Now I've heard preachers preach that the gospel brings power. No, the gospel doesn't bring power. The gospel is power. And we can have the power of God. And it's God's power. Not our power. It's not my power. It's not your power. It's God's power. And we're a recipient of God's power, the gospel. Greek had its philosophy. Rome had its power. But did the philosophy of the Greeks, the power of Rome, could lift men out of the cesspool of sin and make them righteous before God? That was done, and is done by the power of the gospel of Christ. And it's just as effective today as it was the day Paul was preaching in Rome. So who are we? We're God's chosen people called by Him to do what He wants us to do on earth. God's chosen people called saints. Called to live in a manner that we can present the gospel of Christ to others in a way they can understand the righteousness of God. I've been listening to some sermons recently that were not good sermons. They think the righteousness of God is, is condemning sinners, but that's not the righteousness of God. The gospel of Christ does not speak of the righteousness of God that condemns the guilt of sinner, but it speaks of the God kind of righteousness that is given to the sinner who puts their faith in Jesus Christ. What a glorious message we have. Faith in Christ gives us God's righteousness by which we live. And that's the thing that's missing in most of our preaching day. We're talking about, you know, just, just this and this and this and that and that. God's going to bring judgment. He is going to bring judgment. I'm going to get on with that this evening in the message. But what we need to let people know that the gospel shows us the righteousness of God in us. It didn't show us a righteous God condemning sinners. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Paul said, for it's the power of God and salvation to everyone that believed it, to the Jew first, also the God Greek. Now people like to say this, but at first it was ethnic. They went to the Jew first. Then went to the Greek. But later on Paul said, I am, I am dead to who? Greeks and barbarians. I'm dead to all of them. Let me say this to you. The Jew has received the gospel as a nation. Now every Jewish person that comes to Christ today comes like we do. By faith in Christ. It's not simple. But God called us to be saints. Called us to live in a manner so we can present the gospel of Christ in a way that people can believe it. The problem is that most Christians today are not living in a way that people see them believe the gospel. Can we believe what we see or what we hear? The old man told me one time, believe nothing you hear and half what you see. And that's about right. I mean, it's if I believe what I hear now, I'd go crazy. He said in verse 17, For there is the righteousness of God revealed. Revealed what? Revealed in the gospel. Revealed by the gospel. Revealed in our lives. 
Why? How? For there is the rights of God revealed from faith to faith. As it's written, the just shall live by faith. We trust Christ by faith. We live by faith. We can live by faith because the righteousness of Christ, the righteousness of God, is revealed in us. Our faith in Christ has made us just. The just shall live by faith. You know what that means? Just as if I've never been a sinner. Most people say, not just if I've never been a sinner. No, no, just as if I've never been a sinner. When God saved me, he made me new. I am a new man in Christ. I mean, a new person out of me. You know what we should be doing? We should be sharing with others as often as we can what God's done for us. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to have a thousand gospel tracts. Just one is enough. But you need to share with people what God has done for you. That's all you need to, that's all God asks for. Paul was ready. He was ready to preach. He was ready to suffer. He was ready to die. He was ready to give his all for the sake of the gospel. And since we're the call of God, just like Paul was, we should also be ready. Ready for whatever God has in store for us. Ready to live for it. Ready to die for it. Ready to give him our all. Just ready. That was a song in our hymn called Ready. Once in a while we sing it, I wonder if people mean it. Are they ready? Ready? Right now we're going through some difficult days as a church. But I will say to you, Lord, it will only endure for a season. And we must continue on. How, when, we, when will we ever come back here and meet in a normal fashion? Like we used to. I don't know. And nobody else knows right now. But we need to do what we can to do what's right. We need to be good citizens. We need to take care of people. They need to keep, take care of old graybeards like me and other people. We need to do what's right. But what we're looking at right now, it's just going to endure for a season. And we need to be ready to continue on when God lifts the cloud and the sun shines through. The door open, we need to be ready because we're God's people. We need to quit sitting around and grumbling and griping because we can't go down to the restaurant and eat $40 worth of food that cost them $6 a bill. We need, we need to quit thinking about those kind of things. I found out one thing. I can cook a hamburger if I have to. I can make spaghetti. I can eat boiled water without burning. I'll tell you something, folks. We need to quit griping and grumbling. We, this thing we're going through now, it's nothing. It's really nothing. I know it's hard. But it's a good time to develop a closer walk with the Lord. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. You can't spend a lot of time with your friends right now. They say, well, we've got cell phones and all that. I'm going to tell you what that is. Look at the cell phone all day, it's like looking at the wall. Now, I'm glad we got it. I appreciate the technology. But this is a good time to spend the time fellowshipping with our Lord around His Word. I have a challenge for you as a church. When you're shut off from the world and you can't go out and do the things you normally do, it's a great time to read through the New Testament. And as you read through, pay special attention to the portions you think you already know. You might be surprised at how much freshness you'll find in well-known passages when you're going through difficult days. We belong to the Savior.
We are His. We are God's people. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now this message is for the church. But if you had to be listening to this message this morning, you don't know Christ and your Savior, it's not difficult. You know you're a sinner. I've never met a person that didn't know this, and I've met some people lie about it. But people know they're sinners. You know you're a sinner. You need to realize you need a Savior. And Jesus says, come. Come to me and I will give you rest. We're God's people. Let's live like it and act like it in these difficult days in our church. Let's pray. Thank you for all your blessing and your love to us today now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high. The sky is so shadowed with blackness, no shelter or help is nigh. There is no not that we perish, how can so lie asleep? When each moment so madly is threatening, the grave and the angry deep. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will, peace be still, be still, be still. Whether the wrath of the storms I'll see, or demons or men or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace be still. Master, with anguish of spirit, I bow in my grief today. The depths of my sad heart are troubled, awaken and save, I pray. For in some sin and of anguish, sweep for my sinking soul. And I perish, I perish, dear Master, awaken and take control. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Be still, be still, be still. Whether the wrath of the storms I'll see, or demons or men or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace be still. Master, the terror is over, the elements sweetly rest. The sun in the calm lake is mirrored, and heaven's within my breast. Linger, O oh blessed Redeemer, leave me alone no more. And with joy I shall make the blessed harbor, and rest on the blissful shore. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Peace be still, be still, be still. Whether the wrath of the storm shall see, or demons or men or whatever it be, the waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace be still, peace be still. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace be still.